wonderful being here you saw a big crowd bangalore uh, literature festival is a is a cultural event that has grown over so many years it, i love uh, coming to bangalore it's been wonderful being here it's fascinating i had never been to bangalore i i've always loved literature festival so this city is very close to my heart this is the 12th year of the festival it is india's largest community funded festival the festival is absolutely frenetic it's been wonderful at the bangalore literary festival i'm feeling a bit like royalty it's rather nice very well organized this time the turnout is really huge bangalore should be proud of uh, hosting this literature festival it's amazing i think this is great to be at the 12th uh, bangalore literature festival coming to the festival is always like coming home uh, to namabai Bangalore Literature Festival City's flagship literary event had its 12th edition on December 2nd and 3rd in the lawns of Hotel Lalita Ashok Bangalore with five program forums and two children venues this two day event had close to 300 authors and speakers from across the globe store and I, i told him that look would you be open to uh, the idea of having a book on it we can readily agree but as journalists were extremely lazy and uh, you know so it took me like three more years from there to write a pitch uh, for uh, for karthik uh, who who had happened to be at uh, west bank then there's a certain relationship that you build with people and power when you're a journalist and you have to completely undo that when you're doing trying to do a bar a bar of the same thing and they also know that their kids don't listen to them uh, parents will usually send their kids suddenly to go talk to this uncle uh, and so i would often i often get young people coming to see me. universities across the country because all this is based on public money whatever is spent should be uh, reaching out to the maximum number of Uh, people possible so the books that are selected are selected by uh, experts uh, teaching in various universities conducting uh, surveys what is being prescribed as uh, syllabi across the country and such takes are taken up first from a famed fiction writer abraham vergis novelist amitabh kumar poets arundhati subramaniam and ranjit hoskote to india's best selling mythological fiction writers amish tripathi Akshat Gupta, Anand Nilakanthan and Ashwin Sanghi to former England captain Mike Brearley, football journalist Simon Cooper, Gangs of Wasaypu star Huma Khureshi, comedians Anubhav Pal and Kanan Gill, mythologist Devdutt Patnaik, author and MP Shashi Tharoor and our city's very own distinguished writers Chandrashekar Kambara, Ramchandra Guha and Sudha Murthy. Hello boys. I'm very thankful. Yeah. Okay. You feel you're different. Your food habits are different. Your karma, even though you speak, your diet is different. And the function of food is different. So, books of the Bharat series, what what comes across is that there is always a past, present, past, present uh, sort of uh, dynamic working. 
that there is a story in the present and there is a story in the past and then eventually by the end of the book you figure out as to how the two are connected. This is the first time that my, my story is set entirely in the past because the mystery also gets solved in the past. Uh, so that is one thing which I can tell you about book number 8 that it is set in the ancient, uh, ancient period. Where's it gone? <laughs> ah, here it is. Shashi Tharoor, an erudite polyglot. I was like, wait a minute, polyglot sounds like a bad word. <laughs> Let me quickly Google that. It's apparently a man who knows many languages. Yeah. And distinguished luminary would likely embark upon self-introduction with an eloquent symphony of... This is a big word. <laughs> Sesquipedalian nuances. <laughs> Unraveling the tapestry of his multifaceted persona. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the Tarun is confabulate. Communicate, you've got to be understood. So there's no point using uh, long words that no one understands. Once in a while, you can throw them in for effect, and I do. They are the way they are. You leave them out of the world and, and, and let them find their own way. In some ways, I suppose the toughest would have been the very first one because the first novel was, in my case, the great Indian novel, which, uh, when I was writing, I had absolutely no idea if I'd ever pull it off and anyone would ever want to publish it or anyone would ever want to read it because of my day job. Because I'm spending so much time on initially my UN career and subsequently my political life. Yeah, but I'm the wrong guy to ask this question because honestly, I have never believed that writing can be taught. And I know there will be lots of instructors here who are horrified to hear me saying this. But I believe writing, the way you write should be as instinctive and natural as the way you speak, the way you think, the way you walk. Many times your, story, your hero will want to do things in the story, but you're like, how can this happen? You're supposed to go over there. Yeah, this guy's really misbehaving in my own story. <laughs> I have no problem with filmmakers creating misogynist characters. The problem is when we as audiences say, ah, that's a real man, that's an alpha man. The women in the audience that I want to. What kind of a man tells the woman that he loves? This is a spoiler, people, but I have to say this. Lick my boot if you want to show me how much you love me. So is Tamil literary, is the Tamil literary scene today something that goes against the literary canon as such? Who has access to these things? Right? The Talipu is the name of the Talipu. I was told that the Talipu is the name of the Talipu. 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 Tamil apa itu orang itu? Orang Tamil ni lekiri makin dalam sendiri, nabi ni Tamil ni lekiri makin dalam sendiri. Aduh, pada pandangan kita pun ada juga. Aduh, orang tu sedaya macam ni. Yang sama, Tamil ni apa itu? Ini ni lah, amik pun ada. Ada yang pernah ada. Ini kita pun cik mulai pada zaman ni dalam pada ini, ayam tu dalam tu suruh. Aduh, orang pada ini kerana tu tanian tu dalam kedai. Orang cik, ada tu mulai. Ini dah orang tu. Oru marachi yana kala thala paray yana maagamam. Adu temporary. But permanent yana nilam abhi chomamna. Purinchi mullei paradam neida. Inda naamdu bhaya nila. Naamdu nila amai ko Tamil Nadu lo unde. Inge Malay pagadi lo unde. Malay pagadi lo vada puriya makkal unde. The Bangalore Literature Festival is a non-profit run by an eclectic pro bono team led by festival founder and director Shiny Anthony along with V Ravi Chandar. Shri Krishna Ram Murthy, Subodh Sankar, Sanjana Kapoor, Vikram Shridhar, Lakshmi Subodh, Pratiti Punja Balal, Sara Bonti Bakshi, Sadhana Rao, Shruti Venkat and supported by advisors and volunteers. This community funded literary event that the city can be proud of has been brought into life by the friends of BLF who helped in creating with their generosity, energy and time. The Department of Kannada and Culture, Government of Karnataka, is a key collaborator for the festival. The Bangalore Literature Festival and Atagalata, the city-based bookstore and hub for literary events, 
gave out the Artagalata Bangalore Literature Festival Book Prize to honor the best of English fiction, non-fiction and Kannada writing. The Bangalore Literature Festival is a proud part of the first ever unboxing Bengaluru Habba. The objective of the Bangalore Literature Festival is to put together a literary experience that brings writers, both established and aspiring, readers, publishers, students and young professionals and other stakeholders of the city together on a common platform to create a compelling space for engaging and thought-provoking discussions on literature and life. Wonderful being here. You saw a big crowd uh, uh, for to sign the books, and it was a pleasure being with uh, my sister Bhavna Didi on stage. Uh, my latest book, Idols, has been written by Bhavna Didi and me. So Bhavna Didi and I, my elder sister and I, we've written Idols, and the entire idea is to explain uh, the concept of Murti Puja and why we are such proud uh, Murti Pujaks. Didi, if you wanna add anything. There are so many inspirations. I would say the main inspiration is uh, our Devis and the Devatas and what they have done uh, for our lives, in our lives. And we went, want to share this treasure with all of us. And whenever you are touching a mythological subject, every character you have put through, be it Sati, be it Sita, all the Murtis or all the Devis that you have bought in life, mm -hmm. along with, of course, your Shivai trilogy, which I have always been a fan Thank of. You. Uh, what is the kind of uh, emotional uh, research that you go through because historically things are available for yeah. you and you, of course, you so delve into your own uh, journey. One is of course uh, research through uh, reading and uh, you know our family background, uh, our family was such that we learnt a lot of our traditions. But you are uh, you're absolutely right uh, because your story is driven by emotions and emotions uh, you don't research, you just feel it. Uh, and uh, we feel a lot of emotions, a lot of very deep emotions for our culture, for our devis, for our devtas. Uh, we are very, very proud Indians uh, and that informs uh, the story that we write since we feel so deeply for it. Creative liberties is a very western term because it sounds like I am so brilliant that I can take liberties uh, with the gods, uh, which is not the way our traditions were. So if you read Bhasa, you know, the great Sanskrit playwright or Kalidasa, uh, they would uh, they would never use the Sanskrit equivalent of creative liberties. They would uh, use the Sanskrit equivalent of a respectful interpretation in the honor of our gods and goddesses. That's the way I write. If you write that way, then even if you write a different interpretations, uh, diff it's automatically respectful. Uh, and I think readers can sense that as well. This is actually what the book is about. If you see at the, we, there is actually a murti at the beginning, and the entire the title is unearthing the power of murti uh, puja, and. What Didi and I realize that many uh, of the youth uh, today, kids today, who will probably do Murti Puja simply because their parents are telling them to do it. It's not because they believe in it. Uh, so when they grow up, will they continue? God knows, right? And we are trying to explain uh, through this book what are the philosophical uh, underpinnings, what's the foundation of the practice of Murti Puja, what makes idol worshippers intuitively more liberal, intuitively uh, uh, more uh, respectful of the environment, intuitively more respectful of women's rights, of LGBT rights. Idol worshipping kind of naturally does that without you even realizing it. We are trying to explain those philosophies through this. Wonderful. It's not just about an idol. The Bangalore Literature Festival is a, is a cultural event that has grown over so many years. I remember attending one of the first, probably at least more than a decade ago, and uh, since then it has grown in stature as well as in size. Uh, but the most important thing about Bangalore is that this is still a city which is in love with books. So when you come for a festival in Bengaluru, it has a different meaning altogether because people don't come for literature festivals just like that. They come because they are genuinely 
readers. That makes all the difference. Uh, there are many, many literature festivals all over the country. But the difference you feel in places like Bangalore or Pune or Kolkata or Chennai is that these are the cities where actually people are passionate about reading and writing. Remember one thing, history always repeats itself. There are patterns in history. So what you are seeing today is probably something that has also been seen a thousand years ago and something that has been seen 5,000 years ago. So it's just a question of the cycle. So I have always believed that one of the best things that we as writers can do is to make new things sound familiar and to make familiar things sound new. And uh, uh, that's what I do. Because very often when you are reading something, you think that you're reading about today or you think that you are reading about the ancient day and then you realize, oh, I could easily apply this to the modern day. It's, I love uh, coming to Bangalore. We have friends here and we usually come, we've come in the last two or three years for a few days and staying here and it's especially nice to come to the book festival, which is great fun so far. Very nice, very nice, thank you. Uh, it's been wonderful being here, it's fascinating. I had never been to Bangalore, I'd hardly ever been to India, so I'm learning all the time, I'm meeting people all the time. I'm amazed at a literary festival with so many young people, that's very unusual, literary festivals in the West, mostly old people, and just uh, every event is full. I've learned so much listening to Indian writers. I'm on a kind of crash course, Bangalore, and what's happening in India. Fascinated by a city that is bigger than London, Paris or New York that I know so little about and I think most people outside India know so little about and if we know anything it's associated with tech and here I am at an event that has nothing to do with tech but is about kind of mostly Indian writing and creativity and I'm, I, I just don't dare say anything about Bangalore because I'm so new I'm just I feel like a three-year-old child who's trying to understand what's going on. Yeah, I've written many books, especially about soccer. I would recommend to the audience um, Barca, about FC Barcelona, where I went inside the club, or Soconomics, which tries to explain football using data. So, um, yeah, please uh, sample my football writing of all kinds. Well, I've written, I've moved away from football recently. I've write, written about British politics. I've moved away from writing sport. But I was just fascinated by how football is a universal thing, but experienced completely differently in every country. So that's what drew me to, it, to writing about it, I think. Uh, what led me to soccer was a love of soccer. I grew up playing it and watching it. I was um, obsessed with it. And I think um, I'm going to write one more football book soon about all my World Cups. I've been to every World Cup since 1990. So I always think I'm going to stop writing about football, but I never quite do. It gives people so much happiness, and I feel sad that in India there are so few places to play sports of any kind. And I think one great thing for India would be to create more spaces just for kids to play sport. My first book was published in 2010. So since then I have been in, in touch with the literary world. And this is my fourth book. Uh, it's called The Grand Matriarch of Malabar, and it is set in Kerala, uh, in the Malabar, uh, North Malabar uh, region of Kerala. And uh, it is about matrilineal, the matrilineal society of Kerala, wherein, you know, inheritance happened from uh, mothers to daughters, um, unlike the patrilineal and patriarchal system that we usually have everywhere in the world. So, yeah, that, that's, uh, and I enjoy just the, you know, being here and... Uh, um, soaking in the atmosphere of uh, literature, words, authors, people. Uh, I was an army officer and I was released from the army in 99 and after that um, I wrote a smaller, uh, you know, articles and uh, travelogues and all that uh, for uh, smaller publications and uh, then um, I won uh, at the Kala Ghoda uh, Literary Festival and that's how my first book, uh, She's a Jolly Good Fellow, was, uh, you know, came into being. And that, that is uh, based a lot on my own experiences as a woman officer, one of the first few women officers in the army. So it was very well received and that's how my writing journey began and uh, I have a lot more ideas. Probably the next one would be about submarines and I would like to write about the Indian Navy and uh, about submarines. So that's in the pipeline. Asura was written when I was in Bangalore. I lived in Bangalore for three years and I wrote Asura when I was in Bangalore. So this city is very close to my heart. Puneet sir had actually read it and tweeted about Asura when it had come for the first time. So a very close connection to... That's how it, I think it got uh, noticed by Rajamouli and then he called me for Bahubali and a lot of things had uh, happened at that time. So it's very close. Uh, city is very close to my heart. A uh, lot of my friends also here. 
And uh, anti-heroes, as I said, no, I write from all perspective. In books, I explore anti-heroes is because uh, one, it is fun to explore. Second, it uh, breaks down the typical television narrative of making things very black and white. Because Indian culture is all about nuances. So many versions are there. So I wanted to bring them. This is a children's book, but it's an allegorical book, so adults can also read it. It's about an elephant which flew over Neil Greece. I have written uh, very devotional series like Mahabali Hanuman, historical like Ashoka, then Siya K. Ram. Now I'm doing Ramayan, the proper Ramayan. After Ramayana Saga's thing, this proper Ramayana is coming where uh, it's told from Ram's perspective. Uh, the devotional Ramayana is coming in Sony TV, which I am writing. Then I am writing the Karnas film with Rakesh from Prashmara, which will come in all five languages. Uh, then books also I write, Bahubali wrote, Asura I wrote, Ajay I wrote. So I, I won't say research in an academic sense, but as a writer, I've been doing this for the last 30, 35 years. I've been traveling around, collecting folk stories, try to bring that perspective. So it's uh, almost three decades of work, actually. I don't change the plot. I just change, look it from a different perspective. So the events will be the same. It's not that I'm going to add any new events. So that way, that kind of liberty I don't take because it's Ramayana and Bhagavad. The only thing is that, uh, say in my Vanara, Ram kills uh, Bali and we see Ram's perspective, why he killed. I'll be sitting in Bali's mind and asking Ram the questions. That's all. Why did you kill me? What is the wrong? I'm an animal. So in animal, whoever uh, is powerful, he will take the meat and the, this thing. So those kind of, uh, first traditional, even Sanskrit has, like Urubanga, if you see, it's very sympathetic to... Uh, Duryodhana. Uh, Rana's uh, Gadayudha also is sympathetic to Duryodhana, Kannada example. Parva also by Rapasar had uh, given a di totally different perspective about Kunti and the... So this is done, it's not the first time we are doing it. This is how this literature became so rich. Uh, by masters or somebody starting, starting up like me. This, this keep on evolving from last 2000, 3000 years we have been telling from perspective. Only thing is that when it came to TV, it is done for the master, so you can show only one kind. But in books, it is possible to explore all perspective, which we have been doing for last 2000, 3000 years. And when you are exploring the other side, do you see any change in your personality about understanding things a little better? So I write both, no? Huh. So for me, it gets balanced. I don't get swayed by other things. For me, it is like uh, the Tarka Shastra, no? the Samvad, not uh, the architecture, the Tarka, uh, the Samvad thing. That is how we have to learn everything is how traditionally I was taught. So you have to analyze from all sides and tell the story from all sides to understand it more. My Asura, Ajay and all are available in Canada also. Sapna has published it. This is the 12th year and I think I've been here every single year. It's always a joy coming here to meet people, to meet friends, to meet writers in Bangalore, which is one of the richest groupings of writers anywhere in the country. And uh, more than anything else, it's, it's a lot of fun. The, the venue is fun, the people are great fun, and it's lovely to meet old friends as well as make new ones. It's my, it's my first non-cricket book, and it's a collection of my essays and literature. I'm a very passionate sports follower, and of course, every day uh, I watch some cricket match or the other, whether it is live or in highlights. And I've been on a lot of uh, these cricket groups discussing and uh, about cricket and airing my opinions. And uh, then my friends told me that since you are into discussing so much about cricket, why don't you try writing a book? And then we started research on this book in 2019. And I've al I'm also a quiz master, so I've done a lot of research on content. So that came naturally in terms of doing the research, but of course, uh, writing was a completely different process, and we went through a lot of research. Of course, watched all the matches again and again, and came up with uh, ways to express our thoughts to the world. So this book is basically a very lucid read. It's a fast read, and uh, it can be read by people of any age, because at the Balnor Literature Festival, we actually did the session for people who were eight plus. So there were a lot of children who attended the session and a lot of adults who also attended the session. And both enjoyed it equally. So I think this is a book for everyone who wants to know about Indian cricket. I would sum it up as the attempt of two fans to showcase their passion for Indian cricket. So one good thing that we had in our mind was that uh, we should cover all kinds of matches. It should not just be, just be test, it should be ODI, it should be T20, it should be women's matches as well, as well as domestic matches. So in fact, out of our last five chapters, three of them are dedicated to women's cricket. So we have the iconic 2014 triumph of test cricket where India beat England at Wormsley in a women's match. We have the 2020 T20 World Cup match, the first match of that tournament where actually you had uh, 
uh, India beating Australia. That was a lead match. And then Harman Preet Thaw's innings. So the main key thing was to ensure a variety in terms of topics. Also, Indian cricket is not just about the players. It's also about organization. Right now, we are the power center of world cricket because we organize the world's biggest league. So IPL was important. Also, the thing was that how it started in terms of India organizing was the 1987 Cricket World Cup. So we featured the, that final as well. So, so that is how we tried to have a variety in terms of the matches that we selected. It's not just about the facts, because this is not a book about facts. This is about stories. And stories can be expressed in the written word. Stories are not just numbers. right? So that is how people will experience the book. When they read this book, they'll experience the emotions that we felt while watching VVS Lakshman and Rahul Dravid play for the whole day at the Eden Gardens. While Ms. Baul Haq tried to hit that stoop shot and Srisham thought it, how the nation leapt in joy. How the entire nation cried when Sachin Tendulkar retired. So we have a chapter here called, uh, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night. Uh, and that chapter is about Sachin Tendulkar's last test match. So that experience, that emotion is what we want to convey to the readers. It's always been lovely coming back to Bangalore because BLF is one of the you know, most vibrant lit fest in the country, apart from Jaipur and apart from a couple of other lit fests. So I enjoy being here. I had a session on Sidhu Kano, which is my book on the tribal warriors of Bharat. And uh, I recently completed a, a tri trilogy on India's subaltern tribal warriors. Birsa Munda was the first part of the trilogy that was followed by the great tribal warriors of Bharat and finally Siddho Kano. So our session today was around the third part of the trilogy, Siddho Kano. Certain characters, very important characters have been left out of our history books unfairly. I think this is the time for course correction. Our Prime Minister has been very vocal in talking about the contribution of our tribal freedom warriors because our tribal freedom movement predates the the reported or the conventional political freedom movement which uh, you know which is reported from 19th late 19th century onwards it's important to bring out those tribal warriors who have never got their due in the books of history but whose contribution is phenomenal and what's the kind of research you have put through to get those uh, which are like we hidden to the villages we travel to the villages of uh, those villages spoke to their descendants the primary sources of information when it comes to tribal warriors is very limited because obviously, uh, you know, they were not reported, their, their revolutions were not reported while they were alive. They were seen as rebels and history is always report, mostly written from the point of view of emperors. So it was tough, but we traveled to the villages, we made, uh, we, we made use of all the public information, all the information available on public domain and, uh, you know, refer to all articles that are there uh, about these freedom fighters. Come here multiple times. Uh, what I like is the fact that even as it scales up in a very uh, careful and considered way, it doesn't lose the, the fact of human connection and conversation, which is really what a festival is about. It's not so much about scale, it's about the human connection and the centrality of reading and writing. A whole range of things. I have to recover from my own session to think about our sessions. But I look forward to, to certainly looking in at sessions where friends are speaking or people whose work I don't know but want to know more about. Well, Ice Light is my most recent book of poems. It was brought out by Wesleyan University Press in the US and by my publishers, Penguin, in India. And uh, it uh, has to do with uh, questions of what it means to be vulnerable in the time of the great extinctions, at the time of climate crisis, and at a time when our human potential seems to be narrowing. So what are the resources of hope and dream for us? And how do we continue with being more responsible tenants of planet Earth, along with other species? Uh, it's not really a topic for me. It's, it, these are life convictions. These, that stems from a very long-term preoccupation with uh, ecology, with animals, and it, it's also been articulated in other ways in my curatorial work, for instance, with a project called State of Nature. So, yeah, these are themes that have been with me for a very long time. I think not only do we take nature for granted, but we actively violate it and subject it to violence and think everything's going to be fine. There's a way of thinking about nature as natural resources which are inexhaustible, and they are not. So I'm hoping that, um, I mean, there's no explicit message, but I hope that it carries across uh, from the poems because I think as you know 
when you're a poet, you're working also with emotion. It's not just about providing a policy statement. Well, I'm always very happy to be back at the Bangalore Lit Fest because it really is, uh, you know, one of those occasions where you come face to face with your readers and you can actually interact with them. And uh, what's very special about this festival is that it has books in its DNA because it comes out of the nucleus of a bookshop. So Artagalata and its culture really informs all aspects of the festival, whether it's the organizers or the volunteers, uh, this ethos of the bookstore where we are. So it, that, is what, that is what makes this festival very, very special. We'll get a peek into that part of history which you've not read. You know, our political, our freedom movement was not the fiefdom of any one political party. And a lot of those people who have contributed in their individual capacity, mainly tribals and mainly those who didn't have a voice, should be heard, their stories should be told. That's what we've been trying to do. No, it's amazing. I think this is great to be at the 12th uh, Bangalore Literature Festival. I remember uh, friends like uh, Sri Krishna and Ravi Chandra started this 12 years back. It's now, now a mega event. What is unique about the event is about it is supported by the friends of the Literature Festival. They don't have any sponsorship, no tickets. It is making it available to everyone. So that's why you can see the response as well. It is humongous compared to 12 years back, how it uh, multifolded now. The, the other part I really love today, I used the metro and they put a feeder service, which is an electric bus. That's really, really nice as well about sustainability. That's lead to my book title, which is about the Back to Bharat, In Search of Sustainable Future. So there are potential uh, problems that the world is facing today about climate change and inequality. So I'm trying to address that too in the book. So the, my definition of Bharat has nothing to do with what is happening outside. This is about the one billion people that we don't talk about. We always talk about the 400 million who speaks English, who have electricity, who have internet and all that, right? So I'm looking at the billion people who uh, we don't talk about much. So these are a solution from them. So that is, a, that is what I'm offering. So some of my investment like Sahas in Bangalore, in Koramangla, it converts the waste into bio-CNG by Carbon Masters. So like this, a lot of entrepreneurs are solving problems. So I'm highlighting around 150 organizations in here. Around some of these stories should inspire all the social entrepreneurs out there. And this is the best place if you're a book lover and also an author because uh, you get to meet everybody possible. Thank you very much. It's self-evident from the name. is set around the partition of India in 1947. There are three books. Uh, book one is called Lahore. Book two is Hyderabad, and book three is Kashmir. So book one, Lahore, looks at the nine months leading up to the independence and partition of India. Uh, it is set in two parallel threads. The Delhi thread has Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai Patel, and Dickie Mountbatten as protagonists. And the Aam Admi and Aurat in Lahore, Hyderabad, and Kashmir, the idea is to show the consequences of decisions being taken in Delhi on these people, the people who live in these cities. It's a fictional exploration uh, with great historical accuracy about the partition of India. I come from a small town in Punjab called Firozpur, which is a, a border town between India and Pakistan. It is the largest cantonment town. And uh, at the time of India's partition in 1947, it was Muslim majority. So by the laws of partition, it should have gone to Pakistan, but it didn't. And therein lies my reason for becoming a writer. I'm otherwise a trained engineer and uh, went to MBA at IIM Calcutta, had a corporate career. But at some point, I felt the need to tell these stories, which otherwise we don't find in our history textbooks or even in our fiction. I am here to attend the uh, Bangalore Literature Festival. I am an author of two books. Patna Blues was also translated into Kannada, and it was a bestseller in Kannada. So my new book is about Orwell connection with the Motihari, a small town in Bihar. It is called A Man from Motihari, and recently published by the Penguin. So uh, my book is about uh, uh, a small town experiences and about a character which is generally not seen in English literature about a society, about a uh, life in a small town, especially in the uh, Bihari hinterlands, about a middle class, lower middle class Muslim family. So how they struggle and how they have to deal with their identities, different layers of identities. So it is an interesting story about a boy's struggle and it is, in a sense, is a coming of age story also and how he struggles to get his name in the world of 
book publishing. He 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 aspires to be a writer like Orwell. So that is how his journey starts. My literary career started in Bangalore some 16, 17 years ago when I was living uh, next to Garuda Mall. Uh, in a hovel, and I used to go to Blossoms, and I used to pick books, and I and go to India Coffee House, the old one on the main road, and 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 I used to spend hours after work just sitting and writing, <coughs> reading, and you know all of that. So, uh, and after so many years, I mean, I've been visiting on and off, but the fact that Bangalore Literature Festival invited me with my book, I feel a sense of validation because the reading culture that we have here. I I haven't seen it in Bombay or uh, I shouldn't say Calcutta but I think it's not as great as Bangalore so I love it and then the and then the weather this morning is like so uh, my book is about my mother who was a tawaif uh, in the 80s and 90s in uh, uh, Kolkata Bau Bazaar area and in Bombay Kamathipura area which you if you are familiar with the story of uh, Gangubai Kathiawadi so it's a similar story but the only difference is she was a sex worker and my mother was a tawaif in the tradition of Umrao Jan and the character of Meena Kumari Sahib Jan in Pakistan or if you watch the films of Sham Benegal uh, Mandi uh, or or Sardari Begum in fact uh, so in that tradition of the tawaif it's about her it's told in first person it's told by her in first person and uh, i'm just a vessel who's recording and uh, you know passing the story down write more about women yeah i'm done i'm quite tired of reading about men's journeys <laughs> yeah i find it more exciting and thrilling because such little is written about women that in fact when you read that you find the sense of adventure more thrilling in that because you know you've been bereft of that kind of uh, access for so long that it's making more sense to you know read that and engage with that so i feel like i want i personally want to read them and that's my message write about your mothers don't just put them on a pedestal and worship them they are human beings like us right about that it's always it's a really warm festival um, i like the sense of community and to you know sort of look around and to find familiar faces that's really the best thing about this festival and clearly the amount that they manage to pack in there are so many sessions and yeah absolutely and you see people are really enjoying themselves it's a lovely very positive vibe nice little just about this uh well the unicorn quest is about india's startup boom in the last um, in the last 15 years really so the my area of focus is literally from the 2005 till about 2020 onwards and um, it focuses on what really drove internet entrepreneurship in india and the positive factors what has made it possible and uh, really how and the characters and the stories really the people so it's a little bit of a look behind the business factors that made it possible and the people who've sort of grown on the back of that change Now, in a lot of ways this is the story of bangalore because uh, in the last 15 years for certain bangalore has led in internet entrepreneurship in the country right the biggest unicorns the biggest names have come from our city so yes there's a lot of bangalore in this book um but there is uh, also the rest of india is also part of this huge wave so you will find uh, uh, you know i attended some sessions i really enjoyed the stand up i enjoyed the venue very much and the organization and meeting all the other authors and i used to live in bangalore so i ran into many people i knew and i really enjoyed this morning session uh, where uh, i sang and i spoke and shared about my book so it's been such a great experience really wonderful so this book is called drunk on love it's about the life vision and songs of kabir uh, so it presents kabir's life from birth to death through legends and also shares his vision his philosophy what did he really think about the world about life and also translations of his songs the uh, it's there's no message there's a very nice sufi couplet which says ab ishq hai khud paigham apna aur ishq ka kuch paigham nahi now love is its own message there is no message of love there is no message of kabir you just become kabir you have to become that and all this talk of messages it all comes to an end you become love yourself <laughs> they'll be left with nothing which is a great thing they'll be rid of all their mental baggage hopefully and they'll they'll be left with a full heart hopefully
We're all sort of the mad sisters of SE, and I think what I find most beautiful about Bangalore is they've made space for fantasy, speculative fiction, and the range and breadth of panels has been absolutely breathtaking. Such a warm, wonderful city. It's such a pleasure to be here. So today I'm really looking forward to hanging out with a lot of the authors that I know. Yesterday was full panel day, so today is just a day to sort of kick, kick back, see other panels and just be around. So it's uh, Mad Sisters of SE. It's a joyful, madcap, very strange novel about two sisters on a quest across three universes. And I hope very much you pick it up. It's my love letter to Walner. I think it has been wonderful to be at Bangalore Literature Festival. This is my first time at the festival and I've come here to talk about my book, Slow is Beautiful, which invites uh, readers to um, newer ways to observe and absorb through the lens of nature. And I hope this book uh, invites to uh, look at the hidden wisdom in the nature and helps you in connecting with yourself, with others, with life and the planet. Oh, actually, I have five novels, so there are only four here. Um, I just came out of a session called Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows. That's one of the novels that I've written. Uh, I find this festival to be really vibrant, really diverse, such a wide array of uh, topics that are being discussed. And uh, it's just wonderful to meet different readers and, 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 and to hear all of their perspectives about different books as well and to meet other authors. The title makes it sound that way, but it's about a group of Punjabi widows who start an erotic storytelling club. So it's definitely, certainly for absolutely absolutely anyone. <laughs> uh, my readers are from all over the world, they're absolutely everyone. I have readers who are um, older women and also young women, young men, um, readers in you know India, uh, Asia, the US. Uh, I'm quite fortunate that the novel has sort of um, had such a big reach considering its very specific title. As a writer this is a dream to have so many people show up and want to talk to you about your books. It's, it's, it's what we do this for. Um, I think I had, a, I had a really lovely session with the kids um, at the BLF this time. Um, they were incredibly enthusiastic, very cheerful, and it was really lovely. Uh, I started out as an illustrator, but now I've started writing as well. Um, my interest, uh, really, I have an animation background, and animation also involves a lot of storytelling, so it was natural that I, sort, I feel that I progressed towards children's literature. Uh, I also uh, made a couple of films for uh, kids when I was uh, early in my career, uh, and then I really enjoyed working in that space. So it's just been a gradual turn of events. Yeah. Uh, this book is uh, published uh, 10 years ago. Uh, Navayana Publications published this. Now it's uh, republished from Tinted Access UK. Uh, why? Because uh, this book republished again. It shows like uh, uh, Telangana, rural, agricultural people, agricultural children, uh, agricultural women. Uh, agricultural means it's not just victimized agricultural laborer exploitation, but it's a knowledge of greenery, uh, nature, biodiversity and uh, Telangana beauty. It's great just to see the response uh, both from the older readers as well as from the younger kids. I just finished a quiz with them and it was amazing that they knew so many answers about another city and uh, that for me is reassuring. Uh, the idea of this book was basically to encourage and create an awareness about uh, heritage, natural living as well as built heritage. So you have something like the Gateway of India over here and then you also have something like the uh, Kala Ghoda, right? Uh, there's also the Flora Fountain, yes. And you have something like the Irani Cafes, which is also something that needs to be preserved. So the idea is to tell young people and not so young people that you need to preserve your heritage and uh, this is the best responsibility you can be as a good citizen. I like writing for this genre because I feel it's a very tender age where, you know, you're evolving and you're becoming a new human being altogether. And uh, my books are based uh, basically on change, you know, and about real life situations, again in a fiction form, children's form, so that they understand, they make bad choices, and then learn how to fall and then stand up again. So Simi Stands Tall is all about that, where Simi makes some bad choices, 
she knows then the difference between good and bad and then she rectifies those mistakes and she learns to stand tall in all situations of life and i feel which is very important for even as an adult to know and what brings me to the bangalore literature, literature fest is uh, penguin of course i can't thank them enough and vikram who has been great uh, i've always been wanting to come here it's my first visit here as an author and the vibe is fantastic and sharing the same, same platform with sudha murthy she's signing there is even more like my fan girl moment so i mean it's just like me you know when i'm writing uh, i feel it's a part of me who uh, you know when we were kids like uh, we had more extremely adventure based books to read and we never had any indian authors indian situations or scenarios where we could read about and learn how to handle a situation how to deal with loss of friendship how to leave deal with a thing like when your best friends like you know pushed you away for someone else and things like that you know so that joy to write and read and to understand it's just unexpressible and i feel every child should be given that opportunity to read and understand that uh, that life is not all rosy rosy it's a part of everything but still it's very beautiful at the end so that joy is uh, fantastic i think hi nan nan is ravi i am one of the organizers of the bangalore literature festival this is the 12th year of the festival we are very happy in the way this festival has grown over the years first year even about 5000 jana bandidare ah ee vart we are expecting about 25000 to 30000 over the weekend ah uh, ee festival alli 12th edition alli or 305 speakers idare int stage ide ah uh, five for the elderly older uh, population and three for the children you notice the festival alli enu brand illa ondu corporate brand illa it is india's largest community funded festival friend of blf uh, and the organization in it this is the largest uh, festival and uh, we hope to keep it as a community funded festival unboxing bangalore habba ambitions are even bigger for two weeks in december we want to make bangalore the arts and culture capital of this whole part of the world that is the goal for the unboxing bangalore hub the sessions are so tightly packed that it's very difficult to have a q and a many people are avoiding that uh, apart from that coming from the north as i do from delhi this is my pet peeve which is that it should have been spread over 3 days because i feel some of the very interesting sessions are conflicting with each other in terms of the time but otherwise it's been a great you know bangalore is a reader city if i can define delhi as a publishers hub bangalore is a reader city with book selling and you have church street as such a hub the translation should be read without the through not through the prisms of the fact that it's a prison. it should be read for it reading you know the 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 whole seamless reading as we call it and it should appeal in that sense and but it also plays a symbiotic relationship it promotes the source language book also my book is called off the shelf on books book people and places and uh, it was published by speaking tiger uh, books from new delhi and uh, basically it's anecdotal references to some great people who dealt with books some famous publishers and some booksellers as well and then a uh, lot of it is my own personal uh, you know uh, reminiscences and and remembrances of them but apart from that i'm also done a lot on libraries and there is one chapter which will be of interest to all your viewers which is that i take a program promoting reading habit among children in schools for 15 years i've been traveling around mostly english medium schools of course you know i promote the reading habit and there's one chapter on a particular workshop i did in this which is a prototype which is in this book and my session is on tomorrow i hope you get some time waiting <laughs> um there's something very exciting about festivals in uh, in india uh, having been to jaipur and and hyderabad and uh, and other places in australia when you come to a writers festival you sort of look out on a sea of gray hair because it's very much a sort of a middle class middle aged thing to do in australia mostly female but here you get such a fantastic cross section of the population young old short tall uh, interested in all manner of subjects and the degree of enthusiasm about literature here like the degree of enthusiasm for lots of things is heady it's intoxicating it um it actually makes you think that so you're doing something worthwhile uh, I, i'd come back again in a in a heartbeat love it here in bangalore wonderful city wonderful to walk around uh 
it's, it's a very special place. Met some fantastic writers. For the first time, strangely, I'll go home feeling as though I've known them all my life. And great to catch up with friends like, uh, like Ram Chandra Guha, who's you know, such a man I admire so much. And just done with, with, with Ram and with, and with Simon Cooper on the, on the art of sports writing. You know, I hadn't met Simon until a couple of days ago. I long admired his work. We've had the opportunity to exchange books, to exchange intelligences about our industry, to exchange sort of tips on our craft. I, I feel as though I've learned a lot from him. Hopefully I've been able to impart something to him as, as well. And this afternoon, of course, we've got a round table on cricket with, uh, with Sharda Ugra, the rock star of Indian sports journalism. Uh, with Mike Brearley, of course, the, the distinguished uh, England captain. Uh, Amrit Mat Matur, who's, who's written a, a, what I think is, promises to be a really fascinating, eye-opening book about the uh, Indian cricket from the, uh, from the inside. And uh, Suresh Menon, of course, is our interlocutor, who's a wonderful cricket writer, author of a fantastic biography of, uh, of Bishan Beatty. So, an absolute constellation of, uh, of, of cricket and writing talent. Very much looking forward to that. I think... Um, I mean, writing is a very solitary activity, uh, and when you write something, it's like sort of you're setting it free, but you don't necessarily know where it will land, you don't necessarily know what the response will be. When you come to a festival like this, it's, it's very reinforcing to know that you have struck a chord with, with people. You know, the people are actually paying attention to what you write, they are responding to it, that they are kind of inspired by it at the same time. Uh, I'm often slightly worried that I'm going to be a little bit sort of a bit of an anticlimax to reach. You know, the writing's probably the best part of me. The rest of me is um, a, a bit of underwhelming. But uh, but anyway, I just got a new T-shirt. Pretty excited about that. I'm going to be the only person in Australia with this T-shirt. It's going to be great. Well, I've only been here for like three days, so I think in a couple of days' time back in Australia, I'm going to wonder whether it was all just a wonderful dream. But uh, but no. Uh, I'll have the books to remind me. And books are wonderful reminders. I've bought quite a few books from, uh, fr from this bookshop here, books that I wouldn't otherwise have had access to uh, in, in Australia. Uh, I've exchanged books with, uh, with a number of writers. I've been to a, uh, a book launch of, uh, of Sahini's uh, new book, um, The Day I Became a Runner, which I probably wouldn't have chanced upon if I hadn't been in Bangalore. She's a really interesting and impressive writer. I'm really looking forward to, to starting that on the plane home. Uh, Tomorrow, it's back to Mr. Nobody. But, but for the moment, I can feel sort of somewhat vindicated in my career choices. Yes, it's been excellent. This is the second time I'm coming here. I was here in 2019 as well. And uh, I'm here again today. And it's, it's lovely. It's so nice to see a place thronging with little kids and parents and books. How was your experience interacting with your with your authors, with your, sorry, with your yeah, it was great. Yeah, they were. Yeah, so um, my daughter was accompanying me with a book reading, and so it got quite interesting for the kids who were, you know, there. And then finally, there was an interactive session where I had to ask some questions, and everybody was like so eager to, you know, participate, and they had some brilliant ideas <laughs> to share. How has this journey of being an author changed you as a person? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, it's changed me for the better, I would say, <laughs> yeah. Um, you sort of slow down in life and you observe things, you know, and um, yeah, and writing books is a very reflective and a kind of a meditative experience in itself. And then finally coming and interacting with the authors is quite something else. Volunteering since uh, last year, so it has been like a family to me. Artagalata is like a family, we volunteer. So there's no age limit for volunteering at this. Even the biggest person to the smallest kid, we can do it, but it's full, full filled of memories. To address the ever-growing traffic issues and fulfill the interest of Bengaluru audience, the festival team operated free shuttle buses from Vidhan Sauda metro station to the venue. This was an initiative in partnership with Personal to Public. 90% of Indian Hindus say, said they are happy to go to the worship places of other religions as well, not just their own. And you, and you can find evidence of this across, you don't need the pew survey to tell you. Uh, in our puja room at home, of course we have you know, Gurdjies of our Ishtaveta, so for, in my puja room it would of course be Lord Shiva in the centre. My wife is a uh, Jair, my wife Shivani is here, she's a Jair. Loud round of applause for me.